Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can save certain morph and skin data to the content manager so that it can be reused on other projects in the future. This is the final tutorial in the 3D Scan Pipeline series. In the previous video, we applied a scanned Kevin to the neutral base, and in this video, we will continue on with how to save the body shape and facial information as morph sliders, as well as the scanned skin details. Okay, let's start off with how to create our head and body morph sliders. In the Morphs tab of the Modify panel, you'll find the Create Head and Body Sliders button at the top. You'll need to select a category on the top, and be aware that Head and Body will add the relevant sliders to each category separately. Give the slider a name and subcategory, and press OK. You'll now see the separately assigned Morph sliders for the body and head with their respective suffixes in the name. Next, let's look at how to save your character skin material that was baked from the scanned actor data. In the Custom tab, you can see the morph sliders that we just saved. However, if we want to save skin content, we need to click on that category first. From there, if we click Save, it will automatically save data to the Skin Overall category. The data you save in the Content Manager depends on the category you have selected in the Custom tab. For example, if we want to save our character's eyes, we can repeat the process while having the eye category selected. Let's test out our saved results by loading in a neutral character into a new project. We can find those morph sliders we just saved in the same categories and max them out. From there, we can head over to the Custom tab in the Content Manager and apply our saved skin and eye data. They are all in the same place because the All category is currently selected. Once finished, you'll have an identical character as that from your source data. Now that we've covered that, we can have a little bit of fun to create a completely new character from that same base by mixing other morphs into the mix. If you activate the Morph Gizmo at the top, you can see yellow highlights over different body parts where you can click and drag to crudely adjust body and head morphs. For more detailed refinements, you can adjust individual morph sliders by clicking and dragging, and also manually entering in values. If we have the currently used category selected, then all morph sliders currently affecting the body will appear. We can find a number of additional embedded sliders to make additional adjustments to our character shape as well. In both the full body and full head subcategories, you will find a large collection of morph sliders, including ones that increase the overall mass of each part. We can slightly increase these values to make our character a bit more plump. You can use the Morph Gizmo to make slight adjustments to different areas of the body and head to tweak specific areas. Generally, you'll want to start by setting the values of the larger scale morphs, and move on to the smaller, more detailed ones. As you can see, there are hundreds of different morphs to cover every little area of the body. If we move on to the head, we can proceed to tweak small details like the eyes, ears, nose, and jawline to give a more jovial appearance. Be aware that when adjusting head morphs, even the smallest refinement can make a big difference in the overall personality of your character. Finally, you can choose from the embedded library and apply a hair and beard preset to your character, and add additional skin layers for more detail. There are a number of embedded skin details provided for free, and you can also purchase additional templates from the content store to expand your options. Finally. You can search for and apply any combination of clothing that you want. As with skin and hair, you can find thousands of clothing options in the content store. Now that we've transformed Kevin into the stereotypical suburban dad, we can apply some motions from the timeline menu to test out how he moves. That's all there is to it. As you can see, it's super quick and easy to combine your scanned data with the Character Creator Content Library to generate your own custom character in no time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.